DLSS 3, the new super sampling and upscaling application from NVIDIA, which has just been introduced, has certainly gained its fair share of detractors and skeptics. In this video I put it to the test in Microsoft Flight Simulator to establish fact from fiction. Welcome to the Sim Hangar, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. Well the hairs were running almost as soon as the RTX 4090 was released. And as often the case, people are all too quick to put a negative spin on things. Numerous channels have released videos on it. My personal opinion the most notable being Hardware Unboxed. But don't get me wrong, this is an excellent video and a recommended watch. Link in the notes below. In that video, they highlighted the strengths and weaknesses of DLSS 3. The main issue potentially being the difference between an increase in FPS, but an increase in latency as well meaning you could get your FPS counter reading 60 frames per minute, but in-game it feels like 30 frames. So despite an improved FPS, you're getting less response. Now I believe this is an accurate statement for first-person shooters or any fast-paced game, but is far less of an issue for something like a flight simulation, where all movement is comparatively slower. And the Hardware Unbox video mentioned this numerous times, as well as DLSS 3 being ideal for predominantly single core applications, and Microsoft Flight Simulator certainly fits into that category. It's still very early days for DLSS 3, and further optimizations are to come. And in this video, I put it to the test. We're not going to get bogged down into the details of how DLSS 3 works, but normally an increase in FPS means a reduction in latency. That's the time between frames. This anomaly occurs because DLSS 3 does the same upscaling rendering as DLSS 2 as shown in frame 1 and frame 3 above, but then the GPU will independently insert an additional frame, frames 2 and 4. This is a transitional frame, it's not interlacing, and that additional frame will provide for smoother gameplay. Creating additional frame, even though independent of the CPU, does take time and thus the potential increase in latency. These new inserted frames are AI generated using the graphic card's tensor cores. They are to all intents and purposes an estimation, accounting for movement and shadow and so on, of a transitional frame between a traditional first and second frame. This new process then may well be more prone to artifacts within the displayed image, and the faster the movement, the more noticeable these potentially could be. So with all that in mind, the question is, what impact will this have in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Let's test it out. Here's a quick summary of the test conditions. CPU is an i9-10900K, 32GB of RAM, and the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090. Game mode is off, but hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on, as this is required for DLSS 3, as is DX12 Beta in Sim. My NVIDIA control panel settings are all standard, except for power management mode and texture filtering quality are both set to high performance. Generally speaking, the higher you push the resolution on DLSS 3, the better it performs. My previous video was at 4K. For this test, I've decided to use my LG 2K monitor, as arguably artifacts will be easier to recognize. And my monitor is running at 144Hz. Just a quick note here that DLSS 3 is no different to any other screen display parameters. The refresh rate of your monitor will determine the number of frames that can be displayed on screen. The higher the refresh rate, the better, but for Microsoft Flight Simulator 144Hz, well that should be plenty. If your monitor, for example, had a 60Hz refresh rate, well the maximum number of frames that could be displayed is 60 even if the frame counter reports higher, you won't experience the impact of the higher frame rate. To check or change the refresh rate of your monitor, for those with the NVIDIA graphics cards, go to the NVIDIA control panel and select change resolution. This is my LG monitor with a maximum resolution of 1440p. I can choose various speeds, 60, 120 or 144 Hz. For me, faster is better. Yes, I want to keep those changes and we're done. My version of Microsoft Flight Simulator is Sim Update 11 Beta. Deep Learning Super Sampling 3 won't be generally available until official release 11th of November. To record performance, I'm using MSI's Afterburner. Video coming up on that shortly. And I've selected a variety of information to be shown on screen. 
For GPU, we can see the temperature, the speed that it's operating at, and also importantly for 4090 owners, how much wattage is being drawn. Let's have a quick look at my InSim settings. We'll start with TAA mode, no DLSS, frame generation is off, render scale 100, and NVIDIA Reflex is on. All other settings are set at Ultra in Sim. MSI Afterburner is also showing the GPU memory usage and speed, CPU temperature, and you can see I'm running at 5 GHz, how much RAM is being utilized, and on the last line, importantly, is the current FPS, and next to that is the latency. We want to keep a close eye on both latency and FPS. Latency is expressed in milliseconds. 1000 milliseconds equals one second. We're over Antwerp in Belgium. I'm flying the F-18 as we want something moving fast. Plus it has a heads up display, hopefully making it easier to identify artifacts. First test underway. Let me now enable the average frame counter. There we are. That's it on the right of the latency number. We'll keep our eye on the displays in the cockpit. Be flying relatively fast and relatively low and pass numerous wind turbines. Again, should aid us in identifying artifacts at the different settings. In case you're wondering, I'm using the Toby Eye Tracker 5, the best head tracker in my personal opinion. I've also got point of interest on, so we can look at the markers and see if there's any artifacting there. Note I'm currently in TAA mode, no DLSS. This test will be our benchmark to measure against. Currently averaging 51 frames per second, with an average latency I'd guess of around about 19 milliseconds. Displays look okay, no evidence of any major artifacting. We're now dropping in altitude and will fly past the moving turbines. They look okay to me, but of course you must make your own determination. Overall, the flight has felt very smooth. We're now at the end of our first test. Average FPS will take as 52. And I'd say the average latency was, let's say, about 19 milliseconds. On to our second test. We're going to stay on TAA, but I'm going to turn on the NVIDIA frame generation. Creation of extra frames. NVIDIA Reflex is on by default. Reflex is designed to combat some of the latency. All looking good, let's go fly. Frame rates have leapt up to nearly double. Ground visuals look good, but I am getting a little bit of flickering in the cockpit. Looks worse on the video than it did in the cockpit, but it was evident. Currently averaging something in the region of about 10 milliseconds and about 98 FPS. There is a slight drop in visual quality. It's not significant, but once again, the flight feels very smooth. I have noticed the latency seems more erratic with frame generation on in TAA mode. Some artifacting on that POI as we go past. And that's the impact of the frame approximation, the inserted frames. But so far overall latency is better with frame generation on rather than with it off in TAA mode. Yes, still a small flicker there. Something I'd prefer not to see but something I could live with, not a major problem. We'll now descend over this wind farm here to complete our test. I'm paying particular attention to the moving vanes to see whether or not I'm getting any artifacting. And I have to say, nothing significant. Averaging 104 FPS and 10 milliseconds. I can't identify any difference in the handling between frame generation on or off in TAA mode. You would of course picked up that I was able to put on frame generation whilst in TAA and not DLSS mode. With the Series 4000 NVIDIA graphics card, frame generation is available within different modes, including TAA. I think it's also valid to mention that the cockpit clarity within TAA mode with frame generation on was not as bad as it may appear to you in the video. But this is a result of me recording at 60 frames per second and the actual frame rate of the sim being much higher. Please bear that in mind. For test number three, we're going to change to DLSS mode, but I'm going to turn frame generation off. So effectively, this is a DLSS2 test. NVIDIA Reflex remains on. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to turn on the average frame counter on MSI Afterburner. There it is. 
Reminder, this is effectively DLSS2 mode. All settings remain on Ultra. Immediately obvious to me is the graphical anomalies within the cockpit that have all but disappeared. And as mentioned earlier, the responsiveness, well there's no difference. You're obviously only seeing a short extract of the flight, but in each test I did throw the aircraft around a fair amount to test the responsiveness. And once again, we can note that the latency has increased compared to the frame generation on mode. We can take an opportunity just to check out the clarity within the cockpit. All is looking good, nothing is blurry. And as I mentioned in my earlier video, the blurry cockpit seemed to have disappeared. The HUD itself is very slightly fuzzy, but it's like that in TAA mode as well. So no significant difference there. Now coming in for our final flyover, the wind farm. Everything looking good to me. And this flight will end with an average latency of about 19 milliseconds, an average frame rate of about 50 fps, which is, as expected, pretty similar to the TAA mode with the 4090. Our last test now coming up, and of course it's DLSS quality mode with frame generation on DLSS 3. Here we go, let's start recording the average frames. That's now up. During the course of this test, if you've checked the power draw, you'll note it's nowhere near as high as often feared. Clarity in the cockpit is much better than it was with TAA mode, with frame generation on. Looks exactly as it did in DLSS 2 mode. Have to be honest, the aircraft feels as responsive as ever. And we are moving relatively quickly through the sim at about 360 knots. Now turning to line up with the wind farms. Just want to check that point of interest marker, see if we've got any artefacting. Where have you gone? There you are. Perhaps a tiny bit, nothing significant. And I have to say that my response times generally have been very good indeed. And certainly within the 10 millisecond bracket. Well, I have to say I've been impressed so far. I'm going to slow down a little bit and see whether or not that emphasizes any more artifacting. The ground appears as clear as it did in DLSS 2, perhaps not quite as crisp as TAA mode, but the difference is not massive. Now coming in for our final over the wind farm, and again watching the veins to see if there's any artifacting. Don't know how this will come out on the video, but looks okay to me. Perhaps a very slight jaggedness right on the edges. But then again, who's going to fly this close normally? So we end on 101 frames per second, an average of 9 milliseconds. So after all those tests, what does it tell us? First of all, when looking at the results, anything within 2 or 3 FPS should be considered more or less the same, as each leg was flown individually and allowing for the vagrancies of each flight. Where frame generation was used, reminder that's an extra frame, latency was halved. And so in effect, the time between the first and second CPU calculated frame really didn't alter much at all. Which means the latency of using DLSS 3 or frame generation is not a factor in this case. It is perhaps also noteworthy that the TAA modes, which don't include upscaling, returned very similar, if not exactly the same results as DLSS. And that is probably due to the grunt of the 4090. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, DLSS 3 is not really aimed at 4090 owners. It's designed to boost performance for those that don't have enough GPU power. Perhaps those may be those on a 4070 or 4060 or maybe even a 4050 if they ever come to pass. And perhaps also RTX 3000 owners, if and when DLSS 3 is made available to them. As Series 3000 cards also have an optical flow generator. And on less powerful graphic cards, then artifacting and latency may well become a bigger factor than I've indicated in these results. But perhaps what it does indicate is that DLSS 3 does have great potential for the future and enable flight simmers to get a smooth performance where otherwise they wouldn't be able to do so, or perhaps up their settings. Time will tell. 
But with DLSS 3, it's not just about your graphics card. It's about your CPU and your memory. And these factors are going to play a much bigger part in the future in flight simming. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. Thanks for joining me today and thanks for watching. See you soon and bye for now.